So let me start I, once again by extending my sincere appreciation to the organizers of this conference for allowing me uh, this moment to contribute to this high level meeting. The liberating matters of global significance. Uh, congratulations on the splendid efforts of putting together uh, such a world class event. I'm aware that this conference uh, not only brings together people from different parts of the world, but also people of various backgrounds, academia, policy, civil society, etc. So I come to the conference bearing a hat uh, with colors that connect several of these backgrounds from a personal level and the institution that I represent. So at a personal level, I come from a geomatics background, but I have worked in academia in our region and in Europe, as well as government. More prominently, I headed the Rwanda Natural Resources Authority for almost 10 years. So I have colleagues here uh, from Makerere that we used to work together more than 25 years ago as young academics. Uh, in the then Faculty of Technology. So I proceeded to do both my master's and PhD in the United Kingdom, where I worked as a research fellow at the University of Birmingham for about four years, uh, before moving on to Rwanda to head the Natural Resources Authority that oversaw the sectors of mining, forestry, water resources, and land. Uh, over that period of 10 years, I was also the chief registrar of land titles in Rwanda, where we helped to map and register all land in the country. So for six years now, I head an organization called the Regional Center for Mapping of Resources for Development, uh, based here in Nairobi. It is an intergovernmental organization uh, that was formed almost 50 years ago under the auspices of the then Organization of African Unity and the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. It currently has 20 member states, all the way from Sudan to South Africa, uh, mainly from the Eastern and, and Southern Africa region, but we operate across the region. The institution also happens to be the secretariat of the African arm of the Global Geo, or AfriGeo where we bring together all participants in the geospatial field across the African continent. So our mission as an institution is to strengthen the capacity of these member states and other stakeholders through generation, application, and dissemination of new information and allied technologies for sustainable development. We are in the business of harnessing geospatial technologies and more specifically, Earth observations in understanding and mapping our planet better. Dear delegates, no doubt our vision and mission as an institution fully resonates with what this Congress has sought to promote over the years, as exemplified by this year's theme uh, of the Congress which is transboundary resource management, climate change, and environmental resilience, environmental resilience. When you look at that important theme, which I wish to congratulate the organizers for selecting, the important facets that connect with what we do as an institution. And just picked seven of the key words notable in the theme, transboundary, which could be simply 
defined as crossing the border between two or more countries or areas, or affecting both or all areas. We have resources in there, which is a stock or supply, materials, human personnel, and other assets that can be drawn by a person for organization and systems to function effectively. We have an element of management, which refers to the process of controlling or dealing with, organize, operate, etc. We also have climate change, which could simply be referred to as a long-term shift in weather patterns, possibly due to natural or man-made activities. Then we have environment, which is the surrounding in which you operate. And finally, resilience, the capacity and ability to withstand or recover or spring back from shocks. The theme simply calls our attention to the realities of climate change that require, among other things, prudent management of transboundary resources to ensure the ability of communities, nations, and the planet Earth to withstand or recover from setbacks or shocks arising therefrom. The power of Earth observations and your special technologies in this endeavor cannot be overstated. We are privileged to live at a time when there are very powerful satellite-mounted sensors of all kinds in space watching every centimeter of our planet, collecting data on all sorts of parameters with ever-increasing precision. The data collected ranges from the atmospheric conditions of temperature, precipitation, etc., to ground conditions such as ground cover, plant health, water quality, wildlife movements, land developments, etc. So while accessing such a data was a preserve of rich countries some few years back, there is increasing global data democracy arising from technologies that have made it, its capture cheaper. It is now possible for many of our developing countries to even place their own sensors in space to collect data relevant to them. But even more pleasing is the fact that the area space pioneers are now more prepared to share the data often freely. I had the privilege uh, last week to be in Beijing attending a China-Africa summit that was looking at how African countries are, can access more data from non-traditional space countries. And I think in the near future, we'll have a number of remote, sense, remote sensing centers that African countries will develop together with the Chinese space agency to make most of these uh, data available. So on top of what we've been getting from European space agencies, traditional NASA, we are having more countries that have put really very high power sensors in space that are going to now access, access, uh, avail this information and data to us for use in different fields. So really there are exciting times uh, when we can be able to access uh, this information. As I said, when we began our careers 25 years ago, I mean, accept, accessing a Landsat image of 30 meter resolution, which you download over a whole night or two weeks, is something that many people cannot associate with today. So that's why really the emphasis of the privilege of the times we live in cannot be overstated. Uh, you also agree with me that our capabilities and abilities to handle and process this data has grown in leaps and bounds over the past decade. This is a result of advances in computer processing power as well as data storage facilities. Our software advances and programming abilities, including machine learning and artificial intelligence, have also enormously made it possible to analyze very complex situations and come up with models defining, combining a myriad of data sets. This makes it increasingly possible for us to understand complex phenomena in their present form and even accurately predict their trajectories going forward. So the use of GIS is now commonplace. 
Uh, I think the days when the Professor Nueres were introducing it uh, and was sounding Greek in quotation are gone. So we are looking forward where probably GIS will be the next MS office, at least in our disciplines, where everybody has basic understanding of this tool, which is very, very important, particularly in overlaying several facets about ecological phenomena for visualization and decision making. So on top of the great strides in data capture, curation and analysis, the ability to disseminate the same has never been easier. Advances in communication technology through high-speed internet is one extra item in our toolbox as we seek to aid decision making in the management of transboundary resources. Various forms of modalities and tools are now available for the transfer of large amounts of data from one part of the world to another or from one gadget to another. And this was a major challenge not so long ago. So you can be able to share huge amounts of data for processing. You can do research together with teams from different places of the world because transmission of data is much more possible. Even this part of the world, our governments have done enormously well in investing substantially in basic optical fiber networks that are really helping in this process. And this can only get better uh, moving forward. So as our everyday business at RCMRD, we take advantage uh, of the advances I've just outlined. And we are actively using remote sensing, GIS technologies and tools to run several programs and initiatives in our member states and beyond to address pressing issues in key sectors, including agriculture and food security, land use and land cover mapping, water resources management, weather and climate, disaster risk reduction, to mention but a few. We've actually set up uh, a booth at the exhibition area of this conference and where we share a bit of the work that we do. And I invite you to visit and have a chat with some of our staff who are there to understand how we are applying these, advantage, these ad advances we are talking about to actually affect uh, our lives on the ground. We have a common phrase of saying we are trying to move space to the village. In other words, moving advances in space technology to actually f affecting positively the life of a person at the village level. So uh, I hope you'll be able to share with our colleagues uh, what we are doing uh, from our booth. But having said that, let me just highlight a few examples of the works that are uh, most relevant to this year's conference theme that RCML is undertaking in a number of countries. For a start, through the African Union, with the support of the EU, RCMRD heads one of the consortia implementing the GMS and Africa program that is using Earth observations in areas of land degradation, wetland monitoring, and putting together open source vector data. So this is mainly in the IGAD region, where we are using Sentinel data uh, principally to undertake land, land degradation monitoring. This is a major problem in our region uh, together with uh, wetland uh, monitoring as well. Through this program, tools to analyze and understand the phenomenon of land degradation that is a major issue in our region is being done in a number of countries. The same is underway with regard to wetland uh, to the vast wetland resources we are endowed with. Nothing can be more relevant than these two services in relation to transboundary resource management for climate resilience. The second regional program I wish to point out is the biodiversity and protected areas management, which we call Biopama, a project which we implement jointly with the International Union for Conservation of Nature and the Joint Research Center of the European Commission uh, the project uh, is assisting, is aimed at assisting African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries in developing a framework for improving technical and institutional approaches to conserve biodiversity in protected areas. So through that, that program, we've actually created what we call a regional resource hub. 
and within that we have all data related to biodiversity of protected areas in 24 countries on the African continent. So you can go there, find all this information, and use it to inform decision making. Uh, while it may not be at the same scale as the GMS and Africa project, they may also point out, I think I went to one of the sessions where one of our staff, uh, actually Edward was presenting something on uh, invasive species monitoring. So this is uh, something that we've done over time uh, in Kenya to again use remote sensing, citizen science to be able to track uh, invasive species that are menace in the pastoral areas. It's part of our wider program where we do range rangelands monitoring again using uh, remote sensing. So other current programs that we are undertaking include hazard, hazard mapping, which we do across the IGAD region, uh, but also at more detail in the counties within Kenya. And these are very uh, important when it comes to spatial planning. So we are also currently developing a risk management system for plant pests and diseases project, uh, working with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So we are working with the Kenyan government to create this database uh, for plant and pest disease monitoring, uh, together with Penn State University in the US. So we aim at developing a system to promote better surveillance, digital data collection, and reduce on losses based on accurate and timely advisory to improve food security. Of course, there's a lot more we are doing with the crop yield monitoring, etc., uh, that I won't uh, be able to go through. But really the point, as I seek to wind up uh, my short address, uh, the point I'm trying to make is how much we have at our disposal. First of all, in terms of the data we're able to collect much more cheaply and faster, using all these sensors that are available in space. Secondly, the improved capabilities, the enormous improved computing and storage capabilities that helps us to master, process, and analyze huge amounts of data. The, model, the modeling potential, or the modeling tools that are available. And then the communication. So all these combinations uh, that we have should give us an opportunity to really harness far better remote sensing and GIS capabilities to influence the elements that we have in our theme for this conference. That we can be effective contributors to decision makers in promoting resilience through a better transboundary resource management. So finally, uh, as I said at the beginning, congratulations to the conference organizers uh, for choosing a very pertinent conference theme that I believe we can all effectively contribute to. Uh, the few points I have shared uh, have sought to demonstrate the tools available to us to deal with uh, the challenges posed uh, to our planet and how RCMRD and similar institutions uh, can bring the power of Earth observations and your special technologies to bear in that regard. We do, we, we do all we do at the center uh, through partnerships, and I think every project I mentioned, there's a partner. So that's the other element that it cuts across, that whatever we do, partnerships, collaboration is absolutely important. Because it is what I bring to the table, but there's a lot more that can be brought by others.